So here we're looking at the apparent contradictions between civilization and nature. No better place to do this than in a nature reserve. RSPB, Loch Renart, on Isla. This is a hide. Now, nature reserves are held in reserve for nature. Now, according to science and uh, its accepted creed, including Darwinism, we are a naturally evolved part of nature. And yet, we talk about nature, we think of nature as being separate. Well, we have civilization and we have nature, and we have the nature reserve, the nature reserve. So, we have an apparent contradiction with nature. Are we part of nature or is it something separate from us? We can't have it both ways. We could say that native peoples were a part of nature, but are we a part of nature? Are we in harmony with nature? There's no geese here just now. It's a bit, a bit of a gloomy outlook. Drainage ditches, fences. Some sheep there. There's cows over there. So. There's a pond there, a little, little pool of water, some ducks in it. And if this was nature, um, the mud flats out there would extend into natural marshland. Now that's all been drained, of course, long ago. You could drain these ditches. Now, it, in its natural state, this would probably be mixed grassland at the edge of the loch. And the geese would have come here and uh, created their own grazing area. They would, they would cut it down. Well, they would eat it down, trample it down, and create their own short grass. You have to have the grass here grazed now because the geese, geese would just go to the nearest graze field. They prefer short grass for obvious reasons. But it's hardly natural looking here. It's very man-made. It's very much a modern farm. Is this nature? Is this a nature reserve? Is nature not wildness, a sense of wildness? At least semi-wilderness. So we have our nature reserve, something held in reserve, and then we have civilization. Civilization sustains itself by Exploiting nature for money, basically. Whereas native peoples lived in a state of subsistence with a spiritual connection with nature. That engendered harmony and balance. But where we when we exploit nature for money, economic growth, this creates disharmony and imbalance. There's a heron out there. So are we a naturally evolved native part of nature? Or are we something separate apart? Why do we talk of nature as being something separate? Why do we talk of native peoples and species being native to nature? Are we not native to nature? And this is a serious um, point which creates a lot of contradiction and confusion. And uh, it's never answered properly. Um, modern religion is also caught up in the confusion in many ways. But we can surely say that native peoples were a native and natural part of nature. But what are we? Are we a natural evolution of nature? That's what science is always telling us. Telling us it's all down to Dar Darwinistic evolution. Everything's evolution. 
evolved to survive. Thus we build our civilization to control nature. And that civilization is a very, very recent thing. And it does not exist in harmony with nature. It destroys nature. So what are we? What is civilization? So civilization's approach to nature is basically one of exploitation. I once watched uh, a farmer on Mull eat hundreds of acres of land for his thousands of sheep. He went across to a small offshore island, ungrazed, there was corn crakes there, thick grass, ungrazed, and he set fire to it, torched a lot. They can do what they like, torched a lot and put 20 or 30 sheep on it. Now he didn't need that extra land, he didn't need these sheep to be there. So why? Well, it's to use the land to exploit it. Otherwise, the land reverts to wilderness, wildness. And that is the reverse of civilization. True wild land is an anathema to civilization. And this is, is true for conservation bodies as well. It's all about control and uh, domination. Conservation that always wants heavily grazed land for geese or moths, flowers. It doesn't want wilderness to return. It wants control. So conservation is part of civilization's control. It acts as a, as a break in some ways on some of the worst aspects, but mostly it just fritters around the edges and gets involved in little projects like this, which make us feel good and make us feel that we're all living in harmony with nature. Oh, are we really? Is this a natural habitat? Hardly. Better if it's full of geese, of course. So now we control and dominate the landscape with our farms, our towns and cities. Get rid of native peoples. Don't want the wilderness to return. That's an anathema. Where's it all going? More industry, more economic growth, more destruction of nature. And so we find our civilization is in a state of contradiction with nature. Conservation, caught up in the middle, but basically, essentially a part of civilization's ethos. So the ethos of civilization is a never-ending economic growth, and to fill our lives with luxury and comfort, and increasingly cut off from nature behind our brick walls, our towns and cities, or our farmhouses. Native peoples had their spiritual connections to keep them in balance with nature. Now we have financial connections. There's a digger over there. How lovely. Diggers. Thousands of them all over the country digging up everything for Hydro projects, electricity lines, or just to bulldoze roads. Landowners bulldoze roads through their lands. They can do what they like. So now we live our lives of luxury and comfort, safely cut off from any dangerous wilderness of nature. Nature we treat as something separate, a nature reserve. We visit for a little while, point our binoculars perhaps, or techno toys. And then rush back to our nice, safe and secure civilization, our luxuries and comforts. Is that living in harmony with nature? Are we part of nature anymore? Well, we can delude ourselves, of course. Shower coming in, rainbow.
So what it really all boils, <coughs> all boils down to is we have the scientific explanation that we are naturally evolved, anthropological evolution, Darwinistic evolution, and therefore civilization is natural. Ultimately, it must be natural and native. We are natural and native. That's what science teaches us. It's in every scientific study of human behavior. So we can have that, which is the material, physical universe which science teaches, with ourselves, a natural part of that. Or we have the alternative, which is the native outlook, or the religious outlook, which is we are spiritual in essence. And therefore, it is our consciousness which is our essence, not our physical evolution. Not the physical evolution of DNA and uh, genes. What is man? Physical or spiritual, in essence. It is with this that we get to the root of the contradictions between civilization and nature. Between ourselves and native peoples. What are we? A physical evolution or a spiritual essence? One is harmonious and the other is disharmonious. I mean, the, the ethos of modern man, science and civilization is consistent. It's one of exploitation and modern man evolves to control and master his environment and becomes the most important, superior, intelligent species. The most intelligent species, we're always been told, that's us. Yet we are the species that creates all the disharmony with both with nature and within ourselves and with ourselves and within ourselves. Look at the state of the world today. Look at the state of ourselves. Is this harmony? Is this intelligence? Is science really telling us the truth? So we live our lives in states of contradiction and confusion. Mixing up religion, pseudo-religion, pseudo-spiritualities, New Age spiritualities, humanism, which is what science and civilization really stands for, the hu new humanistic age of man, where man becomes everything. Then we have nature and our, all our confused attitudes towards nature. So this is civilization for and we go about our lives of luxury and comfort and we don't face the truth. Where's it all going? So this is a tiny strip of natural or semi-natural woodland that's left. It's called a woodland, tiny. A tiny remnant of what once was. The native peoples would have made their living out of this a woodland, subsistence living, where a civilization can only make a living out of it by cutting it down, by cutting or, and by um, planting commercial forests. There's no money in it. So that's why only tiny remnants like this survive. That's all that's left. Now, native people use mythology to express their understanding of reality. Uh, now, we use science. It's science and scientific knowledge becomes our mythology, the mythology of civilization, which we all believe in. But ultimately, it must be rejected because it is disharmonious with nature. It creates
creates disharmony, disharmony with ourselves and within ourselves. It cannot be true. It is the mythology of delusion. And that is our state of existence today. And yet, the knowledge of science and civilization becomes part of what we are, gives us a different understanding of the universe. We have the material. So ultimately, we are an enigma, an anom anomaly, a paradox, a paradox of nature. What is our essence? Our essence must be in nature, must be native. That must be our essence. Civilization becomes an overwrite of nature, an imprint upon nature, an unnatural imprint upon nature, a paradox of nature. Yet a paradox which gives us a new form of consciousness, the consciousness of the material. Yet the material overtakes, overcomes and nullifies the spiritual. And thus we take the road towards humanism and all its various forms of equality and such like. And we have our tiny little nature reserves to make us feel that we are living in harmony with it all. What are our modern mythologies that we believe in? Well, money, of course, possessions, living in luxury and comfort, economic growth, which is essential. The control of nature, which means its destruction and exploitation. Exploitation of other people. It's always essential to economic growth to exploit other people. These are a few of the mythologies of civilization. Disharmonious mythologies. We are lost in disharmony, disharmony and confusion and contradiction. It's a strange world. So we can't return to being a native part of nature. We can't rewild nature. That's nonsense. We can only civilize it. What do you think, cows? Where's it all going? They don't know either. And this is how conservation is part of the mythology. It creates, bolsters our mythological beliefs that we are living in harmony with nature, that civilization is a harmonious part of nature. I mean, a bit of honest thinking reveals that there's no way that our civilization can be a harmonious part of nature. But I'm afraid the ethos of conservation tries to tell us that it is. And it must therefore ultimately be rejected. So this, according to RSPB, is farming and nature living in harmony, tractor over there. There's a digger working down there. Isn't that a lovely sight? Oh, I can feel good about it all now. My life of luxury and comfort can continue. I can go to sleep at night, glad that I'm living in harmony with nature. Oh, look at that, that's lovely. Nice new drainage ditch. What a mess. 
Nature Reserve? Come on. Of course, the farm was here before RSPB came along. And the farmer can't just be kicked out. The farm has to continue. Just like all the other farms around here, it's just the same as any other farm. Ain't no, I mean, they might tweak a few edges here and there, but it's really no different. Same old mess, same intensive mess created as everywhere else. So this is how nature is recreated by man. Even on a nature reserve. The digger out there. I think it's digging out. Digging out the ponds. Like that one there. It's been dug out. Dug out the mud. Um, there was a heron here when I came in. I flew away. So it creates these little wet, wet, wet habitats. With diggers. I mean, that's gross. You can't recreate the wilderness of nature. You can create things like this, but come on. Pretty depressing, really. So all of this is basically for nature tourism. I mean, if we want to really get in touch with nature and natural harmony, mmm, tasty, then we need to go to at least a semi-natural place. Like the estuary out there, we can get in touch with nature. It's sights and sounds. But here it's all tractors, diggers, ditches, no, you can't get into the essence, the feel, the harmony of nature through all that. But that's what civilization is. Contradiction. Brambles are nice. Loch Grunart at lower tide, low and deep tide. Lots of birds around. So for me, this is a real nature reserve. Pretty much undefiled by modern man. Are RSPB nature reserves, are they nature reserves? In what sense are they nature reserves? And they're basically Farms. I mean, we're surrounded here by farms, intensive green fields uh, for sheep and cows. Of course, geese like short grass. They like uh, small mouthfuls. In nature, the, the, they would create their own short grass. Geese love wild, ungrazed islands. I see them there often, full of rich herbage and flowers, and they they trample it down and they, and they love the wild. Places, but the, the, the reserves here—they're intensive farms. I've seen farmers today; they, they they dig up all the ragwort. Other places, I've seen them take strimmers out, to cut down thistles. I mean, no wonder there's no wild bees left. There's no bees left. There's no flowers left. This is—it's a monoculture of grass. That is. What it's about now, a monoculture of grass. It's a bit like the um, uh, the the game estates, grouse or deer. They kill everything, legal and illegal. They'll kill everything for the sake of the game animal. And here, uh, with the farming, they'll kill everything for the sake of grass. 
It's intensive monoculture. Nature reserve? Well, here it is here. Beautiful. Coastal strip. Now it says here both reserves are working farms, agriculture goes hand in hand with the wildlife as it does for centuries. Yes, but even a couple of hundred years ago, people farmed really for subsistence with, and they had strong spiritual links with the land which engendered harmony and respect. Today's farming is intensive with large noisy machines um, is economic farming not subsistence farming it can never be in harmony with nature with wildlife never obviously some species do thrive with um, short grass and such like but some will do better than others of course it's always shades of grey such a civilization, a process of change, a process of civilizing nature, civilizing the wildness out of nature, controlling it. And that's as true for conservation as it is for towns and cities. It's all one. Sure.